the Navy came here with the thought that um, basically could we launch a missile from a submarine. I, I don't believe Draper ever said no to a question like that. And um, there was money left, as I understand it, there was money left on the fire control work to begin the work on uh, the feasibility of a, uh, of a ballistic missile. And as history uh, pans out, of course that worked. And what that did though is it combined the, um, it combined the work on inertial guidance that, that had gone from a man-sized unit to something that was probably around, you know, a little bigger than a basketball size. Going back, we, we now have the Polaris system in place. Now there's one other element of this that, uh, that I think we should talk to, and that's the, what, what has come to be known as Q guidance. And um, now we bring another factor in. We had, uh, at the time they were young, uh, two, two brilliant mathematicians. One was Hal Lanning and the other was Dick Batten. So Hal Lanning was the uh, person who basically invented Q guidance and that was an improvement of uh, line of sight guidance uh, and uh, basically it optimized the time for hitting the target. And uh, uh, that was very original, uh, but uh, uh, years later it became pedestrian when everybody using it and they call it proportional navigation. But when it came out, the Navy saw it as uh, so unique that it was secret. Nobody was allowed to talk about it. Now it's a classical guidance system. It's called proportional navigation. But uh, at that time, it was uh, very new. And the uh, uh, innovation in it was that you uh, could do all the calculation a priori on a big computer in the lab. And then you didn't need a big computer in, uh, uh, on, on board of the missile, so uh, basically they only has a differential analyzer, they're not a computer. The guidance system that we're talking about, where Q guidance is applicable, is for something where you boost, you're, you're thrusting, and then you're going to coast for a long time. Now think about that. Any space flight, any missile, um, are, they're all in that category. What's not in that category are airplanes, cruise missiles, and things that have an engine all the way. So the, once, this, once this missile age arrived, we had a, 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 we, we had a great desire to be able to fly something that for most of the time had no thrust. So you had to do what you were gonna do while your thrust was on, and you better get it right, because otherwise it's missing. There's nothing much you can do afterward. So um, not only do you need the best guidance system you can get and, and a means to compute, but you better have a pretty good algorithm. Yeah, you did all the calculation. The Q guidance involved coefficient that you have to uh, a priori compute, and uh, you, you didn't have to do it in real time. So you can load those coefficients into the analyzer and do it. Uh, later, when computers were much more capable, they can do the whole thing in real time. I think it was probably landing that led this so let me, going back to what I was saying before, up to that point in time, and everybody else was, was calculating a trajectory that you would take from wherever you took off to wherever you wanted to go, and you'd try to get the missile to stay on that trajectory all the way. So imagine an arc of some sort. You don't go right or left of it. You don't go up or down of it. You stay right on that arc, and you go all the way to the target. Usual way that you will do guidance is like... Uh a cat is following a mouse. She always uh, go with the line of sight. They look where the cat is and it's running that direction. And when the mouse changed the direction, it's changed the line of sight. So you change the direction and it turns out that that's not an optimal way to do it. And instead of moving the whole line of sight, you just do it proportionally. That's why it's called proportional. And if you do it proportionally with the right proportion, you minimize the time for a hit. So that was the great idea there. What Q guidance enabled you to do, and it was particularly important for the Navy because the starting point was a submarine somewhere at sea that you weren't entirely certain where you were. You'd be very lucky if you were at the, at the starting point of that trajectory. The issue with the, the guidance scheme that Landon came up with was that it would take you to the target from wherever you were now. And so right from the outset, 
uh, when you launched from the submarine, it didn't matter if you were off, if the submarine navigation system was off a little bit, it would take you from there. If you had winds on the way up that weren't predicted or the missile had more drag in some way and you got off the course, it would continually try to take you from that point on. You know, no matter how esoteric that equation wound up being, which it w turned out to be simple, um, keep that in mind. It, it was a it was a sub significant change in in the way things happened. Now, I did my master's thesis on um, using a strap-down inertial system to couple the Q guidance. And believe me, I, 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 all the mathematics at MIT, I still had to struggle to try to read Lanning's original um, Draper Lab classified at the time note on, on how that worked. But in, in reality, in the end, what we did, what he did, was he and Batten, uh, but Batten had another interesting, I'll get to Batten in a moment. This equation basically is a, a, a differential equation, vector differential equation, and it has a correction that the Q matrix multiplies the velocity to be gained. And what, uh, in reality, that Q is a time varying and earth varying radius, you know, how high you are, et cetera. But it didn't change enough th that you really needed to do that refinement. So it was a fairly, a fairly easy thing to hardwire into this computer, and it worked. The second piece, and, and I, my understanding is Batten was the guy that realized this. When that engine shuts down, you need the velocity vector to be the velocity vector that will take it with the Earth's gravitational field to the point of the target. The velocity to be gained is the difference between that and the velocity you currently have. Dick had a, a very simple inspiration. If you want to, 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 so you want the velocity to be gained to go to zero. And, you know, Dick's obvious, op, uh, uh, recognize the obvious. The way to do that is to be sure that the thrust is arranged so that the, the change of the velocity to be gained is minus the velocity to be gained. You just point it, point it in the opposite direction and it would be the most efficient way to bring it down and the most efficient, uh, uh, give you more range or less fuel, et cetera. So it was an extremely efficient algorithm. Implication on the world, every ballistic missile, every, every, I call it ballistic, but any missile that has the coast period, any spacecraft to this day is flown with those algorithms. It's just uh, what they did in the 50s is as relevant right now as it was back then. So it was a major um, um, step forward and, and a different kind of talent than we are talking about before. This is purely a mathematical thing. These guys were outstanding mathematicians.